Hey guys, welcome to therevitkid.com. So, as you saw from the post, I'm going to show you how to make a stringer on a monolithic stair. Um, first, I'll show you I have a monolithic stair here. And if I click it and you go to edit type, you can see that there's actually uh, no way to create a stringer uh, simply because it's monolithic, which means one. Um, <clears throat> but there's a workaround if you need it. Uh, if you read the post, I guess you can see a reason why. Uh, but all you have to do is create a. If you'll notice these railings, they follow. A, it's basically a sweep, and there's a profile that drives them. So we're going to create a profile that's going to be the stringer, and we're going to load that into the family, and we're going to adjust it and see how it works. Um, I haven't really tried this yet. I've talked about trying it, but I haven't done it yet. So we'll just roll with it. So on the left hand side here, I'm going in the project browser under families. I'm going to uh, expand that, and I'm going to go to profiles. <clears throat> and under profiles, you see there's different uh, different profiles already loaded in the project. I'm going to use a circular handrail, and I'm going to right click and say edit. Now it doesn't really make a difference if you do it that way, or if you say file, new, family, and then you would click uh, profile down here. But if you notice the profile rail, so there's a different there's a different profile type, and that's why I like to do it through the family editor, through the family tree sometimes, uh, because then it loads it to the correct position. Whereas if you hit profile, it might not put it under rail. So now I'm in the rail here. I'm going to do file save as, so I don't override the circular rail. I'm just going to send this to my desktop and say uh, stringer mono or something. Okay. <coughs> now. Uh, you notice there's not much here, but there are reference planes. If you type VG for visibility graphics, and under annotated, they actually have stuff turned off, which is okay. okay so, so this is what's already inside. So I'm going to delete all of these. Delete this. Whatever it lets me delete. It probably won't let you delete some of them. Trend center. Okay. So now we have our reference planes here. And what we're going to do is we are going to actually let's see this. We're going to create reference planes first, and this is going to be the outline. So I typed RP for reference plane, or on the top you could go to home and reference plane up here under datum. RP is the keyboard shortcut. I'm just going to draw one here. I'm using MV for move. I'm going to move it down, let's just say 12 inches. It doesn't really matter. So there's our 12 inches. I'm going to dimension this. I use DI on the keyboard for dimension. Um, you can see how keyboard shortcuts really make it a lot easier. So, if you're thinking about really getting into Revit, then I would suggest learning keyboard shortcuts. And now we're going to create another reference plane, RP for reference plane. I'm going to pull it out using the move command. Let's say it goes out two and a half inches or something. I'm just making up some dimensions here. I'm going to dimension that. And now I'm going to give these dimensions parameters. So. I select this dimension, I say add parameter, and I'm going to say depth, keep it a type parameter is fine, actually let's call that one height, so let's, uh, let me get rid of di diameter, we don't need that, I'll get rid of depth now, let's call this one height. And this one we can call depth or width. I'll call it depth. <clears throat> and now you can do any type of profile you want inside this. If you want, you could offset a few more and do a C channel, do something like that. I'm just going to do a simple square. Maybe, maybe I'll make it a C channel too, actually. Let's, uh, I'm not going to add any parameters to affect the width, in it, the, um, width of it. But I'll just give it a quarter inch here. I don't know. Let's, Move this out a half inch or something. I don't know. Just make something up. Now you could give all these the dimensions uh, parameters, but I'm just going to lock them for the sake of uh, this tutorial. So now we're going to draw a profile. Now a profile is just um, literally line work. It's going to be a 2D element, and it's it's actually following. And then it, it brings it into Revit, and it follows a path, creating a solid. So it's basically like you're creating the profile to a sweep. So I'm going to use line here. 
I'm just gonna draw around this. I could be locking it right now as I do it, but I'm gonna lock it after the fact so you get to see it better. So I'm gonna use align AL for align. Align and lock that. Align and lock this. Here. All I'm doing is clicking the reference plane, clicking the line, and locking it. Just like I did in all those family tutorials. You see how, how important these uh, locks are. Okay, I think I got them all. Now let's test it before we bring it in. So I just open up the family editor. Let's say this two feet, apply. Good, it moved. Six inches, apply. Everything's moving. Let's move this out to six inches. Great, everything works. Now we're gonna load this back in. I'll save it. And we're going to load it back into the project. Now it's in our project, so if you go to our family tree, you'll actually see it. Stringer mono. So this is the one we created right here. So now we need to actually create a railing with that. So I'm just going to use the railing that's here. If you select the railing, you click Edit Type. Now we're inside the railing. We're going to use a rail structure, and we're going to add a profile. So all these rails you see here are actually the circle. You see here is the profile, the circle diameter, and that's what you see sweeping around this. So if I insert one, move it down to the bottom, call this one stringer. I'm not sure how it's going to set up, so I'm going to leave everything zero for now. But I'm going to select our profile. Oop, we have two families in there. That's okay. So stringer mono, it doesn't matter which one because the parameters are the same. Uh, click apply, click OK, OK. Now you see we got ourselves a stringer. And it actually lined up right away, which is very nice. <clears throat> so you can see it follows the stairs pretty well. It wraps the insides of the stairs, outside of the stairs. Um, you can see we have a little jog here, but that's pretty typical Revit stairs. I don't want to get into that, but that's really how you would do it. I hope this helps, and let me know if you guys have any other questions. And I'll talk to you soon.